If I were to ask you to take a step back and envision what a typical baseball team looks like out on the field, what would you see? Most likely, you would picture all four infielders stationed at their respective bases, and the outfielders spread equidistance apart from one another in the outfield. But with the data available at the game's highest levels, we've started to see a shift, pun intended, away from this over the past decade. If you know a hitter will spray most of the balls put in play into a certain area, wouldn't you want to position your players within that area to increase the likelihood of recording an out? I know I would. In today's video, we will cover what the shift is, how teams do it, and if you stick around till the end, you'll hear my take on if the shift really works. Welcome to Simple Saber Metrics, the brains behind baseball's latest data-driven revolution. If this is your first time here, and you want to learn more about the practical applications of baseball's latest technologies and training techniques, join the movement now by clicking the subscribe button down below. So, before we can dive deeper into the nitty gritty details of the shift, we first need to understand the basics. The definition of a shift is a situational realignment of defensive players away from their typical alignment. By now, you should have a picture of what the shift is in your head, as it has become increasingly popular over the past few decades. But it dates back much earlier than that. There is a record of teams shifting Ted Williams all the way back in 1964, and even a sparse few dating back to the 1920s as well. So it's been around for a while. Why is it increasing in popularity now? Well, to understand this, we need to understand the technology available to teams today. I've done full videos on this specific piece of technology way earlier on the channel, but today we're talking about StatCast. The combination of Chiron Hago movement tracking cameras and the TrackMan ball flight tracking radar system. This allows us not only to know the exact position of where every single ball hit on an MLB field lands, but also where the player was that caught it, how far they traveled, and where they were originally set up. So with this information easily accessible, teams have begun to use it to position players more effectively. For example, if a player hits 10% of their balls to right field, 30% to center, and 60% to left, it would only make sense that you would want more players in the zones where the player hits the ball more frequently. Yes, perhaps at 10% of the time, you may get burned, but I'll take those odds any day of the week. The overall goal of the shift is to put fielders in the best position possible to increase the likelihood of recording an out. So great. Now that that's covered, what do the different types of shifts actually look like? In order to understand this, we're going to break it down into infield positioning shifts and outfield positioning shifts, starting with your typically positioned infield. This one is pretty obvious, but I think it's important to talk about some of the different positionings that teams use that fall into this category. The first being double play depth, where your two middle infielders pinch the middle in order to increase their chances of reaching the bag in time to turn a double play. This is not considered a shift. Although the athletes have moved within their position slightly, there is a border that they must cross in order for their positioning to be considered a shift. This is the same for infield in, or any other positioning you can think of, such as the corner infielders shading towards the line to try and eliminate any doubles. These examples of your typical positioning may seem pretty obvious, but it gives you an idea where the extreme shifts came from. Every single pitch, every single athlete on the field, is moving one way or another, attempting to position themselves where they believe they have the best chance to make a play. That's what shifts are all about too. We just have more data backing up those positioning ideas available to us than we did 10 years ago. Moving on to the strategic shift. This is where one player may be out of their typical position, such as a second baseman moving out into the outfield because the hitter at the plate never puts the ball on the ground towards the right half of the field. Then there are your major shifts, which is most likely the reason you clicked on this video. These shifts include moving three or more players to one side of second base, typically to the right side of the bag when lefties are up and the left when righties are. The goal of this is to eliminate as many ground ball or line drive base hits to one side of the field. Most likely these hitters are labeled as extreme pull hitters and the advantage of creating more outs to all balls hit to one side of the field outweighs the risk of allowing an easy base hit if the player were to pull down and bunt. Would you prefer a player to hit a double or a home run against a normal position field or increase your chances at an out if the ball stays in the park. That's the idea. Also, I say three or more players because it's not uncommon to see the third baseman even shift to directly behind second base. These decisions are not made blindly. 
As I mentioned previously, the field can be split up into several sections, and every time a ball is put in play to one of those sections, that is recorded. For most infield shifts, we focus on ground balls and line drives rather than fly balls, because those are the plays that position players play a larger role in recording that out. The main takeaway is that if a hitter doesn't hit balls to one of these sections, you probably don't need to have a position player stationed there. The situation matters here, of course, but we won't dive into that in today's video. Then we can pop on over to the outfield positioning, where things get a little simpler. In these areas, we can actually swap our focus away from ground balls in exchange for fly balls. I'm sure that you understand why. Just like infielders, outfielders are moving around on every single play. Shifting in and out or a couple steps left and right does not count as a shift. You may see strategic shifts in the outfield as well, where one player moves drastically from his position towards where the hitter most frequently hits fly balls. You get the point there. But finally, we move back into our major shifts where you see, again, three outfielders to one side of second base. This is a risky move, and because of that, it is also quite rare. The other main major shift we see in the outfield is when an infielder, typically the third baseman, moves out into the outfield to position four outfielders. This is used to attack hitters who are mainly fly ball hitters. The threat of an infield single is less than that of a double to one of the gaps, so teams try to take it away. You see this a lot against guys like Joey Gallo. So how can you apply this with your team? Well, I've seen a ton, a ton of different ways, and it really depends on what data you have available to you. This can be as simple as a base, pull, and push system, where athletes take steps in whichever direction that is based on research done before the game. There are a ton of softwares out there that you can purchase to help make some of these decisions, especially at the college level. A coach can yell this information from the dugout, or you could also put some effort into providing the athletes with cards to keep in their pockets that they can check before each hitter. These cards could be labeled to tell athletes to take steps in either directions, front, back, whatever you think helps set the guys up the right way. But before I can finish a video talking about the shift, I want to take a shot at answering the most important question regarding shifts that there is. Do they work? So the stats behind the shift. I've mentioned multiple times in this video that the shift has become increasingly popular over the course of the last decade. But exactly how much more popular? In 2011, there were around 2,000 plays where a shift occurred. Looking back to 2018, you'll see that nearly 35,000 shifts happened. 17 times more in a span of 7 years. That's insane. So if they're happening at a much higher rate, then they must be doing something right, right? Let's take a look at the numbers. First off, we will turn to a stat Baseball Info Solutions has created to help evaluate the shift, that being MLB runs saved per 100 shifts. This is a rate stat that will neutralize the effect of the change in sample size. Since 2011, there has been a steady increase up from 1.19 runs saved all the way up to 1.71 runs saved in 2018. That is a significant boost as well. So not only are shifts happening more frequently, they're also stopping more runs. Then on to a stat that we're all more familiar with, weighted batting average. This chart compares situations where baseball info solutions would recommend to shift or not to shift compared to what teams actually did. As you can see, if you were to shift when you're supposed to, you'll see a decrease in opponent batting average by over 20 points. In the flip situation, you also see that following BIS's advice, teams had a slightly lower batting average against when not shifting when they're not supposed to. So shifts are happening more frequently, they're stopping more runs than they ever had, and they're lowering opponent batting averages. I don't know about you, but I'm sold. Shifts do work, but it's important to remember that shifts work when you're supposed to use them. That is where the data comes in. So what are my main takeaways from this video? We've answered what the shift is, how teams implement the shift, and the numbers behind what makes the shift effective. But none of that is truly my biggest takeaway. This is a somewhat controversial subject, as several baseball enthusiasts think that shifts should be banned and removed from the game. But in my opinion, shifts have earned their spot as a part of today's game. Teams are using data to make better informed decisions about how to make outs more frequently. All teams have access to it, and all teams are doing it, some more successfully than others. It's another example of somebody thinking outside of the box as opposed to accepting what has always been the way it's done. And we're seeing it on a larger scale now. The shift is going to continue to grow so long as it continues to be implemented in the proper situations. Thanks for watching. 
If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more simple saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.